So in the Battle of the Acids, when it comes to azelaic versus salicylic, which is best? Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know I love them both. But there are definitely instances where one has the edge over the other. Are you shocked? Let's get into this. Now, any of you with breakouts will know what salicylic acid is. It's the beta hydroxy acid derived from willow bark that has a number of highly beneficial properties when it comes to skin. It's also found in aspirin, FYI. So what does it do? It's anti-inflammatory, which means that if you have active red, angry breakouts, it's going to take the heat out of those and calm down that redness and swelling and help flatten out a blemish quickly. It's also antibacterial, which means it helps target the, bac the bacteria that trigger the acne process once the pores get clogged. And by reducing the levels of those bacteria, it can lead to less breakouts in the future. And then finally, it's also comedolytic. Now, what that means is it can help break down clogged up pores, allowing them to become unclogged. So it reduces congestion. And that's extremely helpful when it comes to preventing future breakouts. So the constellation of benefits together are extremely useful, particularly if you've got oily skin. Now, it's useful at a percentage of anything from 0.5% to 2%. And it does tend to be a little bit irritating. So it is one of those actives where you're always balancing efficacy and benefits versus tolerability. And I think that is in part to some extent because of certain forms of formulas with salicylic acid in them. Sometimes they can be quite astringent and stripping. So it's also something to bear in mind. It's not just about the active, it's about the delivery system within which you find that active. So that's the pluses of using salicylic acid. Let's move over now to azelaic acid, which you all know is probably my favorite acid when it comes down to it. But I believe there's a place for both. That's why we're having this discussion. So azelaic acid is a dicarboxylic acid. And again, it's found naturally, um, typically in things like grains. And whereas it's not a true acid in the sense that we're not looking at it to break down the bonds between skin cells, which is something that we see both with alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. It's not a true exfoliator in that sense. It has a number of other really useful benefits. So perhaps the most useful benefit in my eyes is its ability to normalize keratinization, which is a fancy name for the way that the skin cells, the keratinocytes differentiate from the bottom of the epidermis to the top becoming these nucleus-free corneocytes that form this highly um, impenetrable um, layer at the outermost part of our skin, keeping the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. Not completely impenetrable, but you know, it's, 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 it's really good at keeping stuff out. And it's that process that goes slightly awry in the kind of end part of the hair follicles, which is where we get congestion, where we get clogged pores or comedones. And it's due to attractions between the skin cells that stop them from exfoliating normally. We are losing skin cells all the time, but at the entrance to the pore, that doesn't happen normally. They clump up together instead of you know, going free and loose into the air. And by normalizing these abnormal attractions between these skin cells, azelaic acid helps unclog pores in a similar manner to retinoids. It's one of the few ingredients that actually has that benefit. So it's extremely helpful when it comes to preventing future breakouts. And it's why it really is my staple when it comes to partnering with retinoids to help acne maintenance um, strategies become effective. Secondly, we have its benefits in those who are prone to hyperpigmentation because it tames the overactive melanocyte, which basically means it helps reduce the production of excessive amounts of melanin. So something that we see typically in post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, where the dark marks or red marks from acne can leave those little footprints behind, um, even right through to helping us tackle melasma. So 
azelaic acid has this really helpful ability to handle both pigmentation issues on the one hand and clogged pores, congestion and acne on the other. But then the other benefit that we particularly like is its ability to be anti-inflammatory in quite a profound way, hence we use it on prescription in the management of rosacea by interacting with toll-like receptors, which are part of our innate immune system, which is there basically to defend us against the environment. But in those with redness-prone skin and rosacea, it's a little oversensitive. So the azelaic acid ability is just to dial that down and make the skin cells a little bit less prone to overreacting. So what does that mean in practice then? I would have to say that when I was faced with somebody who's got oily skin and breakouts, I'm probably going to lean towards salicylic acid. That's probably gonna be my go-to. I think in terms of its ability to acutely reduce the redness of an angry breakout with lots of you know, papules and pustules, salicylic acid, particularly at the higher percentages of around 2%, is going to be my go-to. I will typically partner that with the retinoid at night and that's a really good and well-balanced routine for tackling both inflammatory acne and trying to help prevent future relapses. Once that kind of acute flare settles, I would likely transition over to azelaic acid because we're going to get more of that focused preventative action by, again, that kind of powerful combination of two ingredients that are helping normalize keratinization on clogging pores and that really is the core of why breakouts occur. If those clogged pores didn't happen, we probably wouldn't get breakouts. So salicylic acid is in the corner for somebody with oily, tolerant skin who's got lots of breakouts, azelaic acid for that individual. Once they get a little bit further on, they might still use the salicylic acid on an acute little blemish and in something like flawless neutralizing gel, you've actually got the benefits of both of those together anyway. And for someone with tolerant resistant skin, that combination can be really effective. But if you're more on the sensitive side of things, and just because you have oily skin doesn't mean that you can't be sensitive, I would prioritize salicylic acid in the acute phase and move on to azelaic acid as things got better. However, if it came to somebody who had a condition like perioral dermatitis or rosacea, my foot is firmly in the azelaic acid camp. It would also be there if that individual had acne and sensitivity or a degree of redness and rosacea as well. And because both conditions are common, so too um, can they coexist together. Um, personally, I experienced both the tendency to breakouts and redness and rosacea. The other instance where I might, again, be inclined to use them together is in somebody who cannot tolerate benzoyl peroxide. So a degree of um, people with breakouts cannot use benzoyl peroxide, um, a true allergy can exist. Um, it's uncommon, but it does occur. So in those individuals, I might well be inclined to use both salicylic acid and azelaic acid together. But generally speaking, where sensitivity is at play, I will lean more towards azelaic acid than salicylic acid. The good news is they are very compatible together in a formula and typically best used in the morning and then partnered with the retinoid at night in context of breakouts, or both of them are suitable for use twice a day. So you can use salicylic acid twice a day on its own, azelaic acid on its own twice a day, but you can also use them both together twice a day. It's a highly synergistic ingredients, um, two of my favorites. Definitely there's a sweet spot for each. Um, and I hope this has helped educate you as to what is best for your skin um, and when best to use them in your skincare routine. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.